another video here on Freewell Photos. And today we are going to edit a photo of a fisherman um, kind of framed up in this dock area. And I just seen this guy out at the lake and I said, you know what? I'm going to snap a quick photo. I think that it came out pretty good. I was using my Tamron 35 to 150 and I was clearly at 150 millimeters. You can check that over here in the upper right. What I think I want to do is really make this contrasty because that's just something that I like to do. One of my favorite ways of doing that is adding on one landscape. Look at how much contrast comes in already. Uh, but you know, I'm going to cycle through some of these camera profiles because that didn't come out the way that I was hoping for it to. Uh, it was a weird type of day. Um, actually, I like camera landscape and I really enjoy what it's doing here. Um, this also may be a prime candidate of a photo for me to run through Photolab. Maybe next I'll edit this another time and run it through Photolab. So that way you can kind of see what my workflow looks like there. Uh, because what I'm getting here initially with the camera profiles is not exactly what I was envisioning, but I do like camera landscape. So I'm going to roll with it. This again was with my EOS R6 and I'm just going to pull down on the exposure just a touch uh, because I think underexposing it is fairly relevant. Um, I'll pull up on the vibrance as well because I want to bring the colors out in this image. But you see, I'm making this guy pretty orange and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring that back down. In fact, you know what? There's a button here that I don't really use too often. It is reduce vibrance on skin. Let's see what happens. I'm going to zoom in on this guy uh, just to see what happens here. So if I hit this and it is reducing the vibrance on the skin, but I feel like I can do better. So I'm not going to worry about it in this particular uh, area. What I will do is build some contrast over the entire image. The way that I like to do that is pull down on my blacks. And because I'm not going to print this, I'm not really worried about my histogram. But if you are going to print this, you should probably turn on your clipping uh, indicators and just pull this down. Now, you can also hold the letter J on the keyboard. So let me turn these off for a second. And if I hold the letter J on the keyboard down, you can see that I am getting my dark clipping area. That's just saying that there's pure black under there. There's nothing worth seeing under here. I don't need detail underneath the dock because that's not where the focus of the image is. So I'm okay with those turning completely black because it's a waste of space for people to look. However, I'm going to hold down the J key and pull up on the whites and I'm just going to pull this. You can see I'm starting to clip in the sky. So I will pull that back to the left because I don't want to clip the sky. Uh, I'll also hold down on the J key, mess around with the midtones just a little bit here. Uh, I think I may need to pull those down to the left. And this is all subjective. Just bear with me as I kind of figure myself out on what I think is going to look good. Uh, and I think this might be where I want to go. Let's go ahead and pull down on the haze slider and see if that resolves some of the haziness that may have been in the air. Uh, I kind of like what this is doing to the image. So I'm going to roll with it. Here is the before and here is the after. You can see there's some optic changes as well. That's happening by courtesy of the lens correction. If I turn that off, you can see there's like some pin cushion uh, distortion that this is correcting cool with. So I'm going to leave that be. I'm not worried about noise in this image, so I'm not going to run no noise. Now let's jump into the effects because to me, this is where the fun all happens inside of On One. I'm going to go ahead and add a filter and I'm going to start with color. Many of you know that I like to start with color in my workflow for editing and it's just a personal preference because if I'm working in a, on a photo and that photo is in color and I plan to leave it in color, I feel like that's the first place that I should start. And if you remember earlier, I was having issues with the vibrancy on the person. With this, I get a layer mask or an effect mask. So I'm going to pull up on the vibrancy over the entire image, but I'm going to 
remove it from the individual here. The way I'm going to do that, I'm going to see if the AI picks up that there's a person in here. And it does. So people. And I'm going to paint that out. No. Uh -oh. Lost my mouse and went off. All right. So people and then paint out. And now I shouldn't have any of that vibrancy update or color um, on the individual. So if I turn this off and on, he is pretty much unchanged. I'm going to hit the letter O. That looks a little too jagged for me. So I'm going to throw some feather on there because that's just how I work. Hit the letter O to come back. And I like what I'm getting so far. However, I do feel like I need to work with these colors in the background. The foliage should be a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use my saturation uh, eye picker. Come over to this green and just pull that up to the right. It's putting me on the yellows and it's telling me that I need to saturate yellows apparently. I'm going to try this one more time and hopefully get some green. So I'm going to go with a darker looking green section. And again, it's putting me on yellow. So uh, apparently there's a bunch of yellows over here. Let me go ahead and shift some of those yellows. Ooh, maybe I need to push them to the orange because this is like that fall photo type of look. Playing with the range, maybe that will work. And darkening, uh, if I brighten them, that looks pretty cool, but I think I'm gonna darken these. Let's come over to the greens and see what happens. So if I push up on the greens, you can see that's actually working uh, quite a bit. And just messing around with the range, I think that will do nicely. So we'll pull down on the brightness of the greens to uh, hopefully throw in some contrast in there. And then I'm gonna come to the oranges and saturate those because there's some orange in this particular uh, foliage. That's what it's called. And maybe mess around with the hue on it. Uh, yeah, if I pull it to the right, and I'm okay with this not looking completely natural. Uh, what I'm going for is just something that looks kind of cool. So maybe something like that. Now, what I am noticing is I probably don't want to put this anywhere else on the image now. So, because I am focusing mostly on that foliage. So what I'm gonna do is hit the letter M on the keyboard. I'm going to invert this masking bug, uh, linear mask, and I'm gonna go to linear bottom. So essentially, when I click right about here, that transition is going to block everything down below. Now, what's cool is I created essentially a compound mask. I know that I don't want any of this on that individual in the photo. And you can see that there's still the cutout of the man because I did that first and then I applied the linear bottom mask to my overall image. So now if I turn this whole thing off and on, you can see it's really just impacting the foliage up on top, which is what I want. Because I like the way that this mask works, I'm going to copy this particular mask and I'm gonna just call this trees. So that way I know that that's uh, actually tree color adjustment. So that, and I spelled adjustment wrong, but we're gonna roll with it. And then I'm gonna drop a dynamic contrast on top of these trees because I really wanna bring those trees more punchy. I feel like they're a big part of this image, uh, but I don't want it all over, or this dynamic contrast effect all over the image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that mask into there. So now, when I turn this off and on, again, you'll see it only applying to those trees, which is pretty cool, and I like what I'm getting so far. Now it's time for me to kind of work through this uh, adjustment because I feel like the dynamic contrast may not be right where it needs to be. Uh, let's pull up on the small all the way. Oh yeah, look at that. HDR awesomeness right there. Uh, that's what got HDR a bad rap. So I'm going to go ahead and dial that back because I don't think we need that much on the small side. Um, but I will pull around with the medium and just kind of make this those trees really kind of three-dimensional, make them pop out. Uh, we might even do some dodging and burning in the trees. I don't know. I'm just messing around like I typically do. I like what large is doing. 
it's kind of making it look painterly uh, but if I pull that all the way back I feel like that gives a little bit less prominence to them to the trees so I'll roll with that uh, let's mess around with the shadows in the area uh, maybe pull those shadows down yeah I think that looks better with the shadows pulled down I wonder what happens if I pull the highlights up with this uh, not seeing much of anything so I'm not gonna worry about that and I wonder what vibrancy does pull that up okay so that kind of makes those trees pop a little bit more I'm good with what I got here let me go ahead and turn this off turn it back on I like what the dynamic contrast is doing and if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard you can see this is the original image and look at where we've gotten uh, in relatively short amount of time I've been talking through this process so that's probably why it seems like it's taken longer but it was fairly quick now I think I am feeling pretty good with what I got going on here um, let's see the next thing that I can do let's go ahead and throw in a split tone now I don't use the split tone all that often however I wonder what happens I want something yeah there you go oats so I guess that was the preset I wonder what warm does though we'll go with oats I really like how it is taking everything and kind of making it more brownish because this gives that fall aesthetic and that's kind of what I wanted to go for uh, and with the highlights yeah maybe maybe we should keep that about there I wonder what happens with the shadows uh, yeah I'm not liking that in the shadows so let's kind of work the balance I may change that color in the shadows to something a little bit different but working on the balance uh, I think I like it more with the shadows more prominent um, but I'm not sure I care for this shadow color and the reason why I love working in the uh, split tone if I do choose to work in there is because I get to manually select my color and I think I'm gonna go for something a little bit more on the orange yellow side eh, maybe more red will come down red pink sort of uh, I'm just looking at the image and I'm really just seeing what speaks to me the most I really do like where I'm at right now and I think that'll work now this by no means is a great edit so let me turn that off turn it back on I think that I need to work with my blend mode here so Let's see what happens with soft light. Nope, don't like that. Overlay, uh, not really feeling that either. So let's come up here to one of these other options. Screen is too bright. Lighten is actually pretty nice for this image. It gives you like this laid back feel of nostalgia on the lake. This guy looks really peaceful. So I feel like this look fits. So maybe we'll come back to that lighten again this is just how I experiment and if I go with color uh, it does the same thing it's like you know looking at a photo of your uncle on the lake fishing chilling having a great time probably uh, got no cares in the world that's not what is really going on here maybe it is I don't know I don't know this guy I think I'll go with that turn it off turn it back on I like where we're going let's do some uh, some real edits to manipulate the light this time I think I will add a vignette and I'm gonna add the vignette uh, using the local adjustments so hit the letter M and get the vignette click that here I'm just gonna go ahead and feather this out a little bit more and I'm going to try and make this work for the individual so I kind of like what this is doing here. Uh, maybe I'll make the vignette just a little bit more tight. My computer is just not keeping up with me today. It's slugging around. Hopefully that's not impacting the screen recording. All right, so let's just go ahead and pull this out just a little bit because I don't want this to be too crazy of a vignette. And we'll pull this out this direction. And I think we'll go with something like that. I like how it's dark on the corners. It comes into the center focus. 
So I'm going to roll with that. And what I will do is hit the letter C. And we're just going to bring this gentleman in to one of these uh, intersecting lines. So that way the photo is more about the subject matter, um, which is just the dude on the lake, you know, fishing, living life. And I like what this image is doing. In fact, let's go ahead and throw a border on it. I normally only put borders on my black and white images. But today, I feel like this photo, it just said, put a border on me. And look at that. It looks great with a border. Uh, I always like to use the simple border. Uh, this could probably stand to be straightened out. So let me try that. I'm going to grab my leveling tool and we'll see if we can get this horizon a little bit more straight. Maybe something like that. And we'll hit apply, put them back in there and boom. I think we have a great image. Now, the last thing, and again, every time I say the last thing, that's probably not always the truth, but oh well. We'll try a antique filter on here. No, that's not the one that I want. I want vintage. I think that's what it was. Vintage is probably, yeah, look at that. And it's over the frame, so let me just put it underneath the border. And uh, I don't like cool, so maybe we'll find something that fits better the overall look. That definitely doesn't. Um, so maybe we will go oatmeal, just pull that down. So it's just a little bit of that maybe saturate it a little bit more you know these are just different looks and if i wanted to throw some film grain in there to really uh make that look a certain way make it look like old film i just have that ability to do so uh and maybe we'll just have to increase the amount of this old oatmeal and maybe just pull down the opacity so I think that, you know, going from something that looks like this, which is flat, it's dull, it's not very interesting to look at, to something like this is just more exciting. I think it looks pretty good overall, um, and I hope you found value in this. If you did, smash that like button. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. If you are looking to pick up All One Photo Raw, maybe upgrade to 2024, then consider using my affiliate coupon code. Uh, free will photos 20 that's going to save you some money at checkout but there's no additional cost to you it's purely saving you money and getting you a great piece of software one of my favorite photo editing applications of all time and i really do look forward to the 2024 release of on one once that comes out you can bet there's going to be more content coming your way so you want to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are with this particular edit and what you may want to see later on down the line inside of On One photo editing tutorials slash chill laid back conversations like this. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.